All right, so let's talk about uh, the various types of fields of microbiology. So if you are um, a microbiologist, just like if you're a doctor, chances are pretty good that you have some sort of specialization. Uh, microbiology is a pretty big field. Very few people study the whole thing. So why might you study microbes is sort of the first question to ask if you're going to be studying microbes. And there's a bunch of different reasons. So first off, medicine. That's the obvious one. It's probably why most of you are here in microbiology because of its relevance to the medical field. And we know that a very small percentage of microbes, or at least of bacteria, are actually pathogenic. However, they do tend to be the ones that we care about the most. Um, so medicine is a good reason to study microbes. Food. So uh, you can make food from microbes, and you also need to protect your food from microbes, and that's a good reason to study microbes. Drugs. Uh, we as humans have been in the microbe killing game for like about a hundred years, but microbes have been in the microbe killing game for, you know, hundreds of millions of years, and they are truly the experts. Most um, antibiotic drugs and a number of other different types of drugs actually come from microbes. That's where they were originally discovered. Biotechnology. Now, this is a field that is so big, I don't really have time to touch on much of it, but uh, yeah, you can do lots of like industrial engineering, making stuff, uh, you know, learning about the human body, all of that with microbes. The environment. There are several different aspects to environmental microbiology that we'll talk about in just a second. And last, why not? We are humans. We are curious monkeys. We, like, what sets us apart from the rest of the animal kingdom is our inherent desire to basically poke things with a stick and see what happens. We like learning about things, and we don't need any reason to study microbes beyond the fact that microbes exist and microbes are awesome. But let's break down uh, each of these fields uh, and kind of get a little bit of detail about them. So medical microbiology. Uh, if you're a medical microbiologist, you're mostly going to study uh, diseases that are caused by microbes. That's most transmissible or infectious diseases. Um, some examples include necrotizing fasciitis, chicken pox, both of which are things that we're going to talk about later on in the course. Uh, but even things like heart disease and cancer can be influenced by microbes. Um, there are certain bacteria and viruses that if they infect your heart or cardiac tissue or cardiovascular tissue can increase the risk of a heart attack. Um, everyone by now is probably familiar about the connection between uh, HPV and cervical cancer, but that's by no means the only virus that has a connection to cancer. So many different types of human diseases have some relevance to microbiology. Um, you can also study the ways in which microbes positively regulate us, um, the ways in which microbes help to make us healthy, uh, aiding digestion, aiding the immune response, generally supporting overall health. Just to give you an example, uh, there's been a recent study that showed that some types of gut bacteria, like everyone has different gut bacteria, right? Uh, a lot of it depends on what your diet is, where you live in the world, weird facts about your personal biochemistry uh, and just random chance, but everyone has different gut bacteria and if you have certain types of gut bacteria, that can actually help protect you from developing diabetes, type 2 diabetes in particular. Whereas if you have a different type of gut bacteria, that can actually raise the likelihood of your developing 
type 2 diabetes. And personally, I think that that's an important thing to study. Bacteriology. If you're a bacteriologist, that means that you study bacteria. That's your dig. All right, so some bacteria cause disease, some don't. If you're a bacteriologist, you might study bacteria that just don't cause disease, or you maybe you study bacteria that do. Could be either way, but your main focus is gonna be on bacteria. And you're not just going to study the mechanism of disease pathogenesis. You're gonna study genetics of bacteria, morphology, that's the shape of bacteria, um, and their internal structures, their metabolism, their cell biology and biochemistry, and also how these bacteria communicate with each other, form communities and multicellular arrangements. Um, bacteriology would be probably like the heart and soul of modern microbiology. Like no matter what type of microbiologist you are, you're probably going to involve bacteria at some point. Um, and if you're a, a bacteriologist, then you're kind of at the center of the whole field. Virology. Well, a virologist studies viruses. Viruses are microbes by convention, and um, while they're not technically considered alive, uh, they are thing. They are definitely microbes that are studied by microbiologists. Um, if you are a virologist. Uh, your field is probably more closely related to medical microbiology. Um, like we said before, most bacteria do not in fact cause disease. However, pretty much all viruses cause some sort of disease, even though it might not be a disease in humans. Viruses by their nature are infectious. Um, so virology and medical microbiology are pretty closely related. Virology can also be very closely related to mammalian cell biology. Uh, and that's because in order for viruses to actually work, for them to have a life cycle, they have to get into your cells and they have to manipulate your cells. They have to use your cells' metabolism, your cells' machinery, and things like that, which means that in order to really understand how viruses work, you have to have a pretty good understanding of how mammalian cells work, assuming you're studying mammalian viruses. Um, so virology and, um, and like cell biology are often closer related than virology and bacteriology unless you're studying a specific type of virus called a bacteriophage that, um, that infects bacteria. Environmental microbiology. So this breaks down into several broad fields. Uh, I'm gonna give you a few here. So microbial ecology studies how microbes in the natural environment, uh, form communities, and how those communities interact with higher species, like plants, animals, um, other things like that. Uh, and this is extremely important because, like, with any ecosystem, the foundational level is almost always going to be made out of microbes. And without those microbes, you don't really have much of a higher level ecology. So understanding how these microbes work within the environment and an eco ecological system is vital to preserving and understanding how that ecological system works. Bioremediation, this is sort of an applied field. This is using or making microbes uh, to clean up environmental damage. Uh, a good example of this is that there's a strain of bacteria which has been engineered or discovered, kind of a little bit of both, uh, but basically what it does is it neutralizes acid and it's being used to treat uh, acidic mining runoff water before that that runoff water gets into the water supply and does damage to the, the, the natural ecosystem in the water table. Um, there are also microbes that have been, uh, I don't know that they've been employed for this, but there are microbes that, that they've looked at using for radioactive waste cleanup and things like that. 
We also have agricultural microbiology. This is the use of microbes to support and enhance uh, crop growths. Um, and so like many plants require nitrogen fixation and it's mostly microbes that do nitrogen fixation. So without, uh, uh, without those microbes, those plants don't grow. With a proper microbial ecology in the soil, you can get much higher crop yields. And uh, so we use microbes in human agriculture to increase agricultural yields. We also need to know how to protect our crops from things like weeds, blights, and plant diseases. Um, blights and plant diseases often being caused by microbial organisms. Mycology is the study of fungus, right, which is often a microbe. Uh, parasitology is the study of parasites. Typically what we're talking about is human parasites, often what are considered to be parasitic worms. These are flatworms or roundworms, not like the squiggly earthworms you're mostly used to. Um, and while those worms are not themselves microbes most throughout most of their life cycle, they are a transmissible disease. And their transmissible form is typically eggs. And those eggs are microscopic. And so this study generally falls under the heading of microbiology. Food microbiology um, basically comes down to uh, using microbes to make food and learning how to protect food from microbes that are out there. So we use microbes to produce fermented foods. Uh, some of the most common, most ancient foods uh, use microbes to make them. Beer, cheese, pickles, yogurt, soy sauce, some tofu, uh, bread, lots of other things. Vinegar is definitely in there. All of those are made by microbes of some sort or another acting upon a food source. It often uses a preservative. Um, we also uh, uh, need to study food microbiology in order to protect ourselves and our food from foodborne diseases and from spoilage, right? So how to protect your milk or your whatever from microbial spoilage, you need to know about the microbes. Last, biotechnology. Like I said, huge subject. Um, could devote an entire class to this. You can devote an entire career to it. Um, biotechnology is a huge field, but just to give you some ideas of the things that can be done with it, you can use microbes to manufacture enzymes, to manufacture drugs, to manufacture industrial chemicals. You can use microbes um, to create new genes, which you can then study in the lab. You can use microbes to, as tools to learn things about human and animal biology um, and for the study of medicine and genetics. Uh, a new emerging field uh, called synthetic biology deals with basically the creation of totally new organisms and, you know, Organisms are complex, so we generally start with microbes. Um, so synthetic biology, at, at the point that it is right now, is, is basically the creation of completely new, completely designed microbes. Um, and there's several different ways that it can be done, but if you're interested in synthetic biology, I would urge you to take a look at this link down here. All right. So that is... Uh, that is the various fields of microbiology and what they study.